Rather than just making things functional and sometimes fun, design is moving into a whole new realm of sustainability. And that's the interest of my next guest, Selena Griffith, who is a senior lecturer at UNSW's College of Fine Arts. Selena, first of all, what is sustainable design? Ah, oh, well, no design is sustainable. <laughs> um, all design that we uh, create uh, uses resources and energy to produce and as such uh, it has an impact and so sustainable design is about looking at the social the economic and the environmental impacts of the design that we do and minimizing the harm in that process isn't that up to companies rather than designers to do that well it should be uh, I think sustainability stems from an understanding of what needs to be considered and I don't think everyone in all disciplines and all companies are trained in this area but designers now are being more uh, heavily trained in this area and are more conscious of the impacts that they can have because designers uh, resource multipliers they're the ones that make the decisions about how much gets used and how it gets used whereas a consumer uh, only consumes a, a small amount in comparison so it's it's more imperative that the designers make these decisions in an informed way. So so can you give me an example? Well uh, packaging is a really good example uh, I think now we see more and more products coming packaged in a lighter way or with less packaging because it makes much more sense to use less packaging because packaging really only protects uh, uh, goods in transport and makes them look nice on the shelf and we discard it immediately. Uh, so it not only reduces the amount of materials that we're using but for the company it's a benefit because it reduces the expense of producing the entire product. Well that's interesting because I always thought that it was going to be expensive for, for people to go or companies to go green. Well I think it's been an excuse that a lot of people have used because it seems too hard but I've, a lot of the research that I've done recently has brought up a, a many case studies where it's much more um, financially viable than you would think and in fact in a lot of cases saves a lot of money for organisations. I think you've got some interesting examples too haven't you? Oh well, I do and one of my favourite is Cascade Green uh, which is a beer produced by um, the Tasmanian Brewery Cascade for the Fosters Group, they belong to the Fosters Group and they produce this beer with the intent to minimise the impact, in fact, to have a completely carbon neutral beer, which sounds kind of funny, but there is definitely a market for such a boutique beer. And they've been able to uh, sort of document and they have voluntarily complied to a, a number of environmental standards and undertaken life cycle analysis of the product development and produced a product that is carbon neutral. Everything that they couldn't offset in the process, they've bought. Um, carbon offset credits and they've lightweighted the packaging so the glass bottle is much lighter. They've used industrial designers to design that. They've worked with the graphic designers to um, select paper stock that's recycled and recyclable to use soy based inks uh, and to minimise the number of colours that they're printing with to, but to still have effective packaging which reduces material usage as well. Uh, source the ingredients as much as possible locally in Tasmania. Uh, so, so things such as hops and water and, and other ingredients that you put into your beer. Uh, they won't tell me all the ingredients, I'm sure it's a secret recipe. <laughs> um, and uh, looking at the different types of brewing processes to minimise the amount of energy that you need to keep, say, the yeast warm um, in the brewing process. Now this has uh, generated a huge amount of knowledge that they've been able to share within the entire Fosters group, which has assisted them to make efficiencies in nearly all of their other products. And it's no more expensive. So are they rolling that out across all their other products? They're green across the board? Um, well, I don't say that they're necessarily green across the board, but I'm sure when you have a cost efficiency that you've identified that you can make in one product, it will be adopted very readily across other, range, uh, other ranges of products that and the organisation produces. So the knowledge is shared. And that was a surprise finding for them? Uh, I think it probably was. I haven't ask them specifically on that because that, but I, I, I get the feeling from when I'm talking with them that, that they are very happy that they've found these efficiencies and that they can market it as a green decision. It's really interesting because your research seems to cross between the business world and the design world. Is that a, a trend as well? Um, I, don't, I, th I think business is intrinsically linked to design and design is intrinsically linked to business. So uh, we use designed objects 
every day of our lives without even thinking about it. I mean, you got up this morning out of your bed, which was designed by someone, manufactured by someone and sold to you through a retail process. Uh, you used your sheets, you probably brushed your teeth, you probably ate your breakfast out of some nice homewares. <laughs> um, all of these things you use unconsciously are designed and they're sold uh, to you uh, through, through a series of transactions between um, uh, the manufacturer, the, the distributor, um, the retailer and, and you. And so this adds to our economy. So I think they're intrinsically linked. You would not have the desire for design if it was not a commercial product. Is that what you mean by design thinking? Well, design thinking is a way of thinking, not just about... Uh, um, uh, it's, it's a way of addressing problems. So it's a very holistic approach. You would look at say, um, I think a nice pro sustainability is a really good way of uh, you know, identifying a problem. You might look at a particular part of sustainability. So you might say within our organisation, we produce a, a lot of waste. And a good example of that is a, a local Australian carpet tile manufacturer called Onterra. And they identified um, through design thinking that um, their product, which is a, a commercial carpet tile for, for office space, and, and in fact, we have many of them around the university, um, has a useful life of probably around 21 years, but they're, t they're turned over at venues every seven years. So it's only effectively being used one third of its life. So that's a design research has turned that information up. And the design thinking has then been, well, how can we sustainably uh, use this product or extend its product life for the other um, 14 or so years that it could be used for? Uh, so they've developed processes um, to re We've researched how they could reprint onto these tiles or repurpose these tiles and reuse them. And that's design thinking in action, and in particular in relation to sustainability. So I take it from what you're saying to me that sustainability in design is not just a fad, it's here to stay. I think sustainability is definitely here to stay. And in one of my roles in the oh, in greater community, I'm a member of the Society for Responsible Design. And every year for the past seven or so years, we've had an exhibition on sustainable projects that students produce. And what we're finding now is nearly all students are producing pro uh, projects that consider sustainability. These guys are filtering into the workforce. So I think sustainability um, from a design perspective will be embedded as an integral part of practice and not be thought about as a separate consideration. And that's what we need as uh, you know, humanity um, to occur because we're, we're chewing through resources as fast as we can. Uh, if we can moderate that, reuse, uh, uh, lessen the impact, uh, then we will have these for a longer period of time. It will extend our ability to live to the very high standard which we're currently living. So does it mean that we'll, as consumers, change our attitudes to things as well? Well, consumers are changing their attitudes and a lot of it is through education and you will often notice on packaging it says this is printed on recycled material or we've used soy-based inks or um, we've minimised that and this calls for, um, just as we have our cal calorie counts um, on the back of our uh, food packaging that we should also look at, the carbon footprint, we're becoming much more literate at consumers in the considerations of sustainability and I think that's a result of good marketing because you have the green consumer, uh, the eco-sumer uh, rise, and also because designers are building these pieces of information into the work that they're doing. So yes, it's here to stay, definitely. We need it to happen more. Uh, it is happening more and more, and it is affordable for business to apply. Well, thanks very much for coming in, Selena. Oh, thanks for having me, Susie.